in Limehouse in East London. Um, today, this week's blog, believe it or not, surprise, surprise, is going to be about the hugest fight, I would say, of the year that has been made. Really surprised me when it was announced that Kel Brook of Sheffield is going to be boxing against none other than GGG, Gennady Golovkin. Um, really intriguing fight for lots of reasons. Uh, the fight seems to have come out of really convenient uh, from a business point of view more than uh, you know perfect we we pick to fight to make this fight uh, and originally i mean for, for weeks we've heard talk of chris eubank jr is going to fight ggg which i was interested in that fight that's a, a good fight uh, but as i found even in my own experience chris eubank senior very very difficult man to negotiate with and i think eddie uh, I think Eddie Hearn, what he's actually done is really sort of um, stuck two fingers up to Eubank and probably to teach him a lesson for being so difficult in the hope that next time they can do it, um, the deal a little bit easier and maybe Eubank's demands won't be um, as unreasonable as Eddie understood them to be or felt they were. I wasn't obviously party to the negotiations, so who knows, but apparently Eubank Senior was insisting on he dictated the, the ticket prices uh, he was trying to dictate who the commentator for the event was and apparently every time they reached a milestone and agreed something, Eubank Senior would come back and sort of move the goalpost slightly and say, oh, well, no, we need to... And um, I think Eddie probably had enough of it in the end and um, he responded by uh, making the fight with Brooke. Um, it says a lot... Of, in fact, it could say two things. It says either Brooke really really believes in his own ability and is fearless because he's fighting a guy who's much much bigger than him certainly who has proved himself um, at, at, at a heavier weight to anyone that Brooke has fought previously secondly uh, Sinek would say he's cashing in you know he's, he's had enough of boxing and he now just thinks get as much money as I can and it all goes pear shaped well he's got a good payday because he hasn't had the big fights. I mean, let's look at the people he's boxed. I mean, Frankie Gavin, Bizier, uh, Jojo Dan. You know, you, uh, what, what kind of fights are they? You know, they're, they're not, for me, they, they, they don't whet the appetite at all. Uh, they're the sort of fights that you make when no one really wants to box you and you haven't got the finance to, to entice anyone else in. And look, sometimes fighter has to take a hit. Promoter has to take a hit, and we all accept that. No one minds the promoter taking a hit, but when it's a boxer has to take a hit, no one likes it. The boxers, the managers, they all complain. You know, it's normally they point the finger at the promoter. It's their fault. The thing is, if Brooke doesn't generate the money, you haven't got the budget there. Where does this money come from? Eddie Hearn can't just pull it out of you know out of his backside, out of his dad's pocket. They're, 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 they're going to want to. Somehow promote him, and I think sometimes you have to fight for position more than you fight for necessarily the money. And boxers don't like that. Even sometimes, as a promoter, as a manager, as someone that's experienced in seeing careers unfurl and how to build a guy, I feel very frustrated, especially because I promote and I manage. So I can be sat there, sort of saying, "Look, there is no money in this fight. There just isn't money there. The guy doesn't sell tickets. He doesn't attract TV. He doesn't have any sponsorship." if we want to get past this milestone, we have to fight this guy. That's been decided by a sanctioning body, not, not our choice, we'll choose someone else if we can. But that's who we have to fight, we have to fight him. And I've had a lot of experience, I've been in boxing 15 years. Sometimes, like in, in, in football, you will never get a guy with one year's management experience, having never been at that level himself as a, an athlete negotiating deal it just would not happen it just is unthinkable it will never happen you know the guy would have to have a track record he'd have to have proven experience at a top level in boxing it happens all the time all the time and i can tell you chris eubank senior um would have had experience in boxing as a fighter and probably had some leverage in his negotiating as his own fights but Chris Eubank Jr. has not fought any of the guys. The best person he's fought by far is Billy Joe Saunders, and Billy Joe Saunders beat him. So no matter how much anyone would like it to be different, 
That's the case. And if he wants the fight to happen, then he has to gain leverage. And to gain leverage, he has to, he has to, to fight for position. Um, meaning that you don't have all the clout, you don't have all the say, you can't make all the demands. You can't sit there saying, I want, well, you can, but you're not going to get it. You can't blame Eddie Irvin for sticking two fingers up at, at, at that and moving on. Especially when Brooke was willing to, to, to make the fight. I mean, Eddie is, is quoted as having offered two million to, to Jesse Vargas, three million plus 50% of the TV money to Adrian Broner, uh, even more, he says, to, to Danny Garcia. So it's not that he hasn't uh, tried to, to oil the wheels of industry and make the fight happen, he has, but it's still not a big enough carrot to lure those top American guys in. And I think if they are going to do that, they have to really take a hit financially. What I mean by that is lower their purse and push that money into the other guy's purse. And until they do that, I think El Brook will still be fighting the Biziers and the, the Frankie Gavins and the JJ Dans of this world. But now we have the fight with GGG, which for me, like I said, even it, it tells you, right, he believes in himself to a degree that is absolutely amazing. He thinks he's going to step up two weight divisions in one go and beat a guy who I've seen boxing with flesh. I saw him in Monaco uh, not so long ago. And he made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. 